Hey everyone, my name is Sam, and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell notification if you get to the end, enjoy, give the video a thumbs up, yada yada yada. So, I know this is like probably a little bit late, but but like right around or after-ish, I think it was like after-ish, Netflix released this show with like, oh, what's her name, Maria something? About the cleaning up and decluttering in space. And I guess she made a joke that, or not a joke, made a comment that, like, you should never have more than 30 books. And then it, like, spread into this meme. And then some people were like, you're bullying her, whatever. No, okay. So that whole chaos. But I was, remember watching this and being like, man, what kind of a world would that be? I wouldn't want to live in that sort of a world where I was only allowed to have 30 books. Like, no. Just a hard no to that. But someone posted in a group that I'm in saying, like, I saw Haley and Bookland did this video. If you only had 30 books that you were allowed to, what 30 books would it be? And I was like... Hmm, interesting idea. I have not actually watched the original video from Haley and Bookland, but I will find it and put it in the video description. So if ours is like kind of different, like just concept structure wise, then, you know, that's probably why, because I didn't watch the full video yet. And I spent a solid like three hours going through my, just sitting in front of my bookcases and being like, what could I do without? Nothing. Now, some of these, I'm getting, making myself get real specific. I have to pick the edition for some of these, like, because let's be real, I would cheat and be like, Outlander, and that's like 50 books right now, right? Like, <laughs> between all of the different editions I have of it. So, I'm picking just a specific edition of some of these titles, just because, you know, why not abuse myself more? And I'm also, some of these are, like, not the first book of a series. So, like, I'm assuming in this concept, like, you can read the other ones. So, I'm just going to assume that I've read book one of that series, and I'm just going to take away, buy, just keep. Yeah, we'll, we'll say in this concept, I'm able to rent books from the library. <laughs> Or whatever, for, through whatever medium, I was able to access the rest of the series. And this is the book that just stood out to be the most. Okay? So that's why. I don't know if that's cheating or not. That's just, like, the premise that I've set up in my mind. Let's be real. I was born in 1992, and I'm a librarian. Books 1 through 7 on this list are books 1 through 7 through Harry Potter. I'm in no way pretending that there will ever be a world without Harry Potter. I don't want to live in that kind of a world. I would rather live in this world where you can only have 30 books and get Harry Potter than live in a world where you get every book but Harry Potter. That's just a no-go for me. So this thing is, like, there's just, like, emotional attachments to this series as well. Like, I grew up when these books were coming out. I remember vividly people standing outside the bookstore line, like, lined up at midnight for books, I think four and five in my hometown. And I remember someone driving by, apparently, and yelling, like, Dumbledore dies! Spoiler. Um, in one of the books. And, like, these are just, like, so iconic. And the movies were so well done. Like, one of those... I'm one of those people that liked the movies anyways. Like, they did a, like, a legit good job adapting them. And, like, they're kind of, like, abusing the franchise now for pure money. And, like, I get it. Because, like, I keep throwing money at it. But, like, I don't want to live in a world where I don't get to keep Harry Potter. So, I will bow down and give up the house editions because I just, they would be all different house editions with how I'm collecting them. And the illustrated ones are beautiful, but we don't have them all yet. And I don't know if they're all going to be just one volume. So I will settle for my box set that I have. That's, I also love the neon colors of them. So. Now this one kind of hurt me, but I was trying to be realistic that like, if I had picked all of Harry Potter and then all of the Outlander series. Like, that would take up, like, over half the list. Like, I can't live that kind of life. I like a little bit of diversity. But I remember vividly, like, just the book Outlander. I read this book and, like, I would have been totally content if this had been, like, just, like, a, like a, a standalone and, like, a slightly different ending to make it more of a standalone. I would have been contented. This book just got me really back into reading and historical fictions. And I just was stuck in a rut reading-wise, like, I don't know, 10, 12, however many years ago I read this. And, like, I just wasn't really enjoying reading anymore. And I was very... I think at the time period, too, I kept being like, I want to read historical fictions. And when I was a kid, I just got a lot of, like, well, there's the Dear Canada series. Here's Dear Canada. Go read Dear Canada. Like, you can only read Dear Canada so much, right? <laughs> like, so I think this was just... There's a lot of sentimental things or memories that I hold to Outlander, specifically Outlander, the title, um, that I would never want to give it up. And I want to keep the um anniversary edition because i think the anniversary thing makes me realize like how long ago i started getting into this series and it's really cushiony and soft and like 
don't know, it just has all these lovely little details. I also was like 100% sure that this book was going to be on there. The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. I want the anniversary edition, or I guess special anniversary edition. I don't know. But this edition, uh, part of it being my friend Melanie actually gifted this to me for my birthday like two years ago. Um, this is one, this is the first book I remember reading and throwing across the room. Like this book got me. Like it hurt me. I think this is the first time I'd really read a book too with like a sad ending like obviously it's a historical fiction but like in world war ii and like a depressing era but like i don't know why but at that age i was just what do you what do you mean this is how it that's not what you, that's not how you're not allowed to end the books like that it's supposed to be you know happily you know you may lose a couple people on the way but this is not how it's supposed to end that you can't do that like and it was a library book i threw it across the room and just and that was i think the first book too that i read the library copy of it and was like we returned it and I was like, mom, we have to go buy a copy of it. Are you sure? Well, I think it is too. My brother gave it to me too. He recommended it to me. He's like, it's really good. And then I read it and was like, we have to buy a copy. I have to have a copy. No, we have to go buy a copy. So yeah, I just, this book is just a lot of things for me emotionally. Um, and then this copy additionally, as well as just a gift too that I really appreciated. And it's also very pretty and, um, yeah, it's my favorite standalone of all time. So it's just um, something that I will never part with, for sure. Also, a book that, like, just kind of refreshed my absolute love in the past three years of middle grade. Like, I, I didn't really read a ton of middle grade when I was going to undergrad and grad school. I just didn't really have the time. It was just a lot of, like, Russian history text and articles and stuff about racism and propaganda and all that stuff. And then I kind of switched gears when I got out and started reading a couple books that are actually on this list that are on. But and it was all YA. It was all YA. And then, like, getting back into middle grade being like, you can still enjoy middle grade as an adult. There's different lessons and actually I find it a lot, it's like a palate cleanser a lot of the time for YA. You go in and, like, a lot of the time there's not romance in it. It's just so nice and like these moral lessons and just not super complex worlds but with like good messages and so that is why nevermore the trials of morgan crow is on here by jessica townsend i absolutely love wondersmith but there's again just something special that i attached to this book um being that that it really got back me me back into really really enjoying middle grade and to keeping it more of an eye on the releases in there because there are some amazing books like um rm romero's the doll maker of krakow like that is another book like it's not on this list but like it's a book that i don't know that i really would have paid attention to if i wasn't trying to get back into middle grade and i think this one really pushed me to like keep my eye on on the age group um and i'm also planning on getting a tattoo about it so Definitely Travis Morgan Crow, and I'm keeping the UK edition because the covers are cooler. I like the taller version, like it's taller than the Canadian edition. I think the Canadian American North American edition is about this tall. Um, and then the under the uh, dust pages, and on the Wondersmith book too. And then the under dust jacket. They put so much time and effort. It's so much better than the North American copy. Like it's insane. Um, and yeah, and this book just gives me a lot of those. Again, it, it gives brings me back to a lot of the Harry Potter vibes and the being a good person and good lessons and having strength and your differences are always can be a good thing they don't have to be a bad thing sort of i could deal without the first book i like the first book but i could not live a life without book two in this series and so i'm like okay well like but if i put book one in there it's just taking up a spot and i really would prefer to keep all these other books in there so i'm putting in a court of mist and fury by sarah j mass i have never felt the amount of book like the the level of book hangover after a book as i did with this book i just walked around vacantly everything was foggy i didn't know what the heck was going on with my life anymore this is just a book that like i would fight you and you could have my firstborn if you were like you get the firstborn or this book i'm like all right see you kid like i know that's dark but i love this book <laughs> i for a variety of reasons <laughs> I'm keeping hold of The Black Witch by Laurie Forrest. I am keeping my signed edition. I have another one that's not signed that I got originally when I just purchased it. And it's all tabbed with, um, from when I read it. I have read this book probably seven times, if not more, since, um, as a whole or in pieces, since um, it came out. It came out and was like called like the most racist book in the world. And like, I read it and have never disagreed more with the review in my life. Um, the book is very adamantly vocally, I don't know if the arc was completely different or changed or whatever, but the book is very adamantly vocally 
anti-prejudism. Like, it show like, the people who are racist or sexist or abusive or whatever are the bad guys in this book. There's people getting over prejudice, which is in insanely interesting. Because we all have that. We're grown with it. We're, even if we ourselves aren't necessary, we don't, we aren't racist or whatever, but we're still brought up, especially in North America, with this culture that prioritizes white people and straight people and men over every other you know, demograph in that, in that realm and being, you know, natural born versus an immigrant or a refugee. Like we're still doing it to this day. And we have government structures that do this. Like there's, you can't argue against that. And I think having this world where the main character is far more flawed and she's grown up quite sheltered. It wasn't my experience, but I actually gave this to a friend and my friend was like, I saw myself in, in L like I grew up in this rural community in the middle of Alberta, in oil patch fields. I was brought up that we were better as white people. And then I was thrown into living in a metro city center outside of Alberta. And you can't say things like that in those communities. Like, she's, it's it, it just like, it's a wide eye opening experience to be thrown into communities, especially in a university. That is where a lot of the time that happens, where you interact with people from different backgrounds and areas, and you learn all of the things that you grew up um, being taught or raised or kind of pat in the back of your mind just being kind of trained to know and i got called racist for suggest recommending this book by multiple people who never actually read the book ironically so i will forever go to my grave arguing with people about this book <laughs> so i always want to have it on hand to force other people to read it instead of telling me i'm racist for having read it and um and just taking away the lessons of it because i think it's it's really important then I could never, ever, ever part with my copy of My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. I remember, I don't even remember what the book was itself, years ago, like when I was in elementary school, that I read a book that was like by two or three authors, it's probably two authors, and it was, oh, I hated the book so much. And I remember being like, I'm never reading a book by multiple authors again. Who the heck does that? And then I read this book and was like, oh, I was wrong. <laughs> I this is the first time to have ever read a historical fiction that's comedic. I love every part of this. There's the Tudor influences. I've read this book, I think, three times now. I'm definitely going to reread it. I'm just following these women. Whatever they put out, I'm going to purchase. And I just love the concept of taking something that was incredibly tragic when you look at what happened to this woman in real life and just messing with it to give you that happy ending instead of that ending that's like the book thief where you're like, but that's not allowed to happen. That's not a happily ever after. It's it's just fun and weird. And I love messing with history and things that happened in the past and influencing it and manipulating it and fixing it because so much in the past has been messed with and so and you could fix things now and just Yeah, and the uh, this they they totally changed my mentality and how I thought of books written by multiple authors. I feel like this one is gonna make me lose some subscribers, but whatever. Um I am also putting Shadow and Bone the trilogy on here. I seem to be a minority, sorry, by Leigh Bardugo. I seem to be one of those minorities that I enjoyed Rude and Rising and I don't hate Mal. You can click away now if you don't want to listen. But I'm I'm not alone. I will tell you, I had a recent conversation with someone who she asked me not to say her name in public because my friend, other friend, is going to be angry at her. But even she said, it, it made sense. The ending makes sense. I love this full trilogy. This is the book series that got me back into pleasure reading. And I picked up Shadow and Bone because uh, the Banff location is basically like a bookstore location. It's just kind of like a liquidation-y stuff. So I picked up Shadow and Bone, if they had it there, on paperback. I think I read it in seven hours. <laughs> so I ran to the bookstore in Canmore, which is the town beside it where I actually live. And um, they ordered in book two for me. And it came like a week later. And I ran to the bookstore when they called me and said it was in. Um, and then I just had to wait. I think it was like six months or whatever for Rune and Rising to come out. And that got me back into pleasure reading. And I sat there. I was like, well, what the heck am I supposed to do until Rune and Rising comes out? And they're like, well, there's a series called The Lunar Chronicles. Do you want to try that? That seems quite popular. So I will always assign, associate a lot of very good, almost adulty transitioning moments to the series. Speaking of the Lunar Chronicles, again, if I literally combine like Outlander, Harry Potter, Shadow and Bone, and the Lunar Chronicles, that'd basically be the full freaking list. So I was like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> now, 
I love the Lunar Chronicles, start to finish. Every book, I couldn't find a freaking flaw in it. It gets better as it goes. The writing is awesome. The character development is awesome. It's diverse cast. It's the first sci-fi I've read in an immensely long time and enjoyed. It's got, like I just said, that thing of, like, it, I re started reading it in that summer where I got back into pleasure reading after, you know, so much post-secondary education where I couldn't do any pleasure reading. So I looked at the series, and I always come back. And apparently, again, this seems to be a minority opinion, but I will stand ster stern. Scarlet is the best book in that series. I'm sorry if you disagree with me, but you're wrong. <laughs> None of the books are bad. I think they progressively get better as books as they go through. But there's something specific... Maybe, no, she specifically also gets better as a writer as we go through this series. That's very blatant. Like, she, you can tell Cinder's a debut, and then when you look at what she does in Winter, it's insane. Scarlet and Wolf, first of all, they're the best couple in there. I love them all, but I'm sorry, you're wrong if you think that, <laughs> if you think that Cress and Thorn are. Scarlet and Wolf are. I'm sorry. That's just... The, that's just facts, okay? Just hashtag facts. I read a lot of bit fantasy YA books, and, like, even when you look at Shadow and Bone, the main character is, like, kind of a pushover for a lot of it. Scarlet is the exact... I had not read a book where the main character was just so, like, nope, and, like, throws tomatoes at people. Like, just... I love everything about Scarlet. I love everything about her upbringing and her wolf and her, and, and her wolf and her story and how she is about her grandmother and it just... And the narration of the audiobooks, too, does so much so much to benefit i love hearing the french accent and just i love everything and i i just i love everything about scarlet okay um speak easy speak love by mikhail george i'm heartbroken because she has not released another book since um since this came out in 2017 or 2016 it oh i do have things tabbed in here it is a much ado about nothing retelling much ado about nothing or taming of the shrew are are one of one of the two is my favorite uh, Shakespeare plays of all time. I have this weird relationship with Shakespeare plays that I was forced to read them in high school and just didn't understand them. However, I got to, re I read all the tragedies, and let's be real, the tragedies are depressing. Um, I read Romeo and Juliet, like, I like that one. However, it was the first time I'd read Shakespeare, and I was like, I don't understand what they're saying. Um, and then I had to read Hamlet the next year in grade 10, and then Macbeth in grade 11, and then King Lear in grade 12. I have since had to read King Lear for three other university courses. I am done reading King Lear, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, second year, third year university, I took a Shakespearean English course and we got to read more than just the depressing tragedies. And much ado about nothing, Beatrice is my soulmate. Like, I, <laughs> I love everything about this. The movie adaptation too, where like half of the cast is Harry Potter, Denzel Washington, and Keanu Reeves. Just, uh, and the guy from House, Wilson. I just, I love everything about this story. The, the misleading thing. It's just so classic and traditional and fun and goofy. And then putting that concept in Prohibition era, North Connecticut, I think it is. I think it's Connecticut. In, just outside the United States. Yeah. And it's with a speakeasy and like, the, the miss, you know, mishearing and sending romance. At, I'm just, yes, I'm just yes here for this whole thing i really really if she watches this please write another book especially shakespeare retelling i absolutely loved this i found out about it and then sent it to my friend meg and my friend meg absolutely freaking loved it too like i just need more of this and then i found out she's a librarian too so like girl please please write more for me a curious beginning by deanna rayborn i am furious that it took me as long to read this as it did this is one of my favorite books of all time period like the rest of the series is good but like Veronica and Stoker, like, do things to my freaking soul. Also, my obsession with Veronica Mars has just spawned this thing where I think I just, like, love every something, a series or whatever, no matter what media it's in, if there's a main character named Veronica. I don't know what's going on with that. But the banter, the historical fiction, the the comedy, the 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 growth, the teasing and slow burning of the romance. This is the perfect, like, if you went inside my brain and were like, how could we craft a book perfect? Like, her favorite book of all time. This. This is the product of that. Once again, I think this is an influence, The Kiss of Deception by Mary Pearson, is an influence of me having not had the chance to pleasure read for so long with school and everything. And this is the first book I remember in a quite a long time that I was like, wait, what? At the end, like, I did not see the twist in this book coming. Like, Apparently some of the people are like, oh, it's not coming a mile away. No, I, no, this book just shook me. Like, and I was like, okay, well, apparently I need to get over this cover. Like, I'm not loving the faceless white girl on a cover with, yeah, you know that thing. Love, 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 love the story, this writer, this world, the characters. 
the kind of triangle that ends up splitting and kind of being a peaceful thing. The the main characters just grow so much in the series. But like there is just something about the first book that like I don't know that the rest of the rest of the books could have been amazing, but if the first book wasn't didn't get me the way that it did, like I don't think I would have continued on with it. So I just there is something oh plus it has maps. Like I'm trash for maps and books. So like this is a this is like a other than like the cover being meh, like this is like one of my favorite books of all time. Sort of along that same wavelength, I'm gonna add Snow Like Ashes to this list by Sarah Ryan. I there is something about this I don't know how to explain it. This magic and like lied lineage and like the lost the whole hidden hidden monarch and hidden children and lost families and being kind of hidden out of sight in plain sight and like just everything that this book uses is like what I love. The, everything that is involved in the background. Like I love the politics and the the like the nitty gritty details that are always have to be in the back of the mind and the finding of all these like tokens essentially to like get your powers together. It's just everything I love and I love Sarah Rash's writing and I think this is the first trilogy I remember like just like being like I need help like I want to reread the series for forever and I honestly wasn't when I finished this book loved this book like head to its toe but I didn't realize the like hold it was gonna have on me and like it's only been a couple months but I finished Sweet Black Waves near the end of December or like mid-December it's the end of February now. This book is like, I'm still in my mind. I'm, I'm here for this like medieval saga-y retelling thing that's kind of coming about in YA. I had to do a lot of that medieval, like we read like Beowulf and all that stuff in, in university. But it's just, I, I don't know if it's a come full circle now that I get to read this like leisurely, but like taking of these classics like Tristan and Isolde, or like recently I read The Lost Queen, taking these forgotten people in medieval history, especially women, that were either just completely forgotten or we've kind of fantasized them into being these like just submissive things in the background of these male lead characters. And just taking them and messing with them. Like there is just something beautiful in my mind about doing that nowadays. So Sweet Black Ways by Christina Perez. This book was also gifted to me by my friend Joanne and um, also again like I don't think I'll have to go into too much detail about this because I have raved over this book on my channel a variety of times and I first read it whilst I was like I, like I vlogged it and whatever and like reviewed it on here. Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. This re-evaluated my look on contemporaries and contemporary romances and chiclet. I'm I don't want to say that I was but I'm going to be real. I think I was a little bit like snooty about chiclet is just trash. Like why? Why bother? If I'm going to spend the time reading I'd rather do something of more interest or more detail or more effort and then i read crazy rich asians by kevin kwan and like oh my god i was wrong this is like the best unwind book i've ever found for me like it's trash in the best way it's it's my kardashians it's my mcdonald's you know what i mean like everyone's got this like guilty pleasure and like you know what it's 2019 the world is really messed up right now if reading a book about stupidly rich people having all this relationship drama is what I want to do then you know what I could be doing far more damaging things to my brain okay <laughs> or to my wallet let's be real the book was like 12 bucks okay another book that made me hardcore change my look on contemporaries is Heretics Anonymous and I'm specifically in this situation keeping the arc I have a hardcover finished copy of it however the hardcover finished copy removed the quotes on the back okay they are freaking golden and I don't understand what the like I mean I can because like some people will probably find them offensive. But like by Katie Henry, she wrote, <laughs> okay, I need to read you the quotes. So normally backs of the books are blurbed, okay, by like author. No, she did something else. So I love Heretics Anonymous more than I love Iron Spiked Girdle, St. Catherine of Siena, Pope from Gr Pope Gregory the Sixteenth. I thought this book was modernist abomination designed to drive people away from God. But then again, I felt the same way about Street Lamps. From Pope Stephen, Stephen the Eleventh, Publishing this book is a clear act of immorality, unlike that time I dug up a previous pope's body and held a full-scale trial against a skeleton, which, by the way, that actually happened. Look it up. Like, it, he actually did it. It's in, actually, BuzzFeed, or I guess it's not called BuzzFeed Blue anymore. There's a series called Ruining History, um, and they did one on, I think it's called, like, Three Bad Popes, about three popes who did some pretty questionable things, and that one's on there, and you should read <laughs> it. It's insane. And the last one is from St. 
Quateria, St. Quateria, Heretics Anonymous is the story of a ragtag band of misfits who take on a society, much like much like when I and my nine sisters were opposed to getting married, so we ended up wait, waging guerrilla warfare against the Roman Empire. <laughs> I am furious that those were taken off the final copy. And she said they might go on the paperback copy. So I'm going to keep an eye out for when the paperback copy goes out. And if they're on there, then maybe I will buy a copy. Um, this is the first time. I think I actually kind of cried a little bit when I was doing my original review of it. This is the first time I've read a book with a main character who's an atheist. And, like, I'm privileged. I'm cis white born in Canada. Like, I, other than growing up in, like, a quite low economic class, like, I was given a, a leg up on a lot of different people, right? So, however, one thing that's really, like, come to my, I, I don't know, as I grew up, it was just, like, we, my family was never specifically religious, but we, I always grew up going to Catholic school and whatever, I just felt very weird and uncomfortable, like, I didn't, I, I was never religious, I was never baptized, none of that stuff, and then reading this was, like, I'm a sarcastic atheist who was forced to go to Catholic school. He is a sarcastic atheist forced to go to Catholic. Like, I've just never clicked with someone like that. And I feel like that just shows, like, even if it's something as little as, like, I have all of these benefits already in my favor. And, like, that representation made me s cry. Like, I was just shook. And then, like, that's why we need that representation in, in books. Um, on here, The Rook. This is the first book I've read in a really long time by Daniel O'Malley that, like, got me into paranormally contemporary like supernatural-esque stuff i just i there's you can hear you can watch my review to see me read about this i love this book so much i just it just something about it it's again stuck with me since december and i don't see it going anywhere and i'm really excited for the tv show don't think this is going to be any shocker here but i'm also putting never night and god's grave by jay Kristoff on this list this series is just i hate the man so much it's so good i'm such trash for it it's got me into this new adult adult fantasy binge and like strong dark as hell questionable women trash for it and Kristoff's writing I I think I really appreciate him specifically that he writes books in these very weird formats and just kind of takes a risk on a lot of the stuff and I appreciate that so I'm trash for this series and I cannot wait for book three to finally come out and for the rest he's releasing a book in 2020 I think that's got like the holy grail and vampires involved so like yes and last on this list of 30, I know I'm sorry, this is probably a really long video. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But um, the Illuminae series are a book 20, 28, 29, and 30 on this book. Illuminae, Gemini, and Obsidio. I will go to my grave fighting that this is one of the best trilogies from start to finish ever written. Period. End of sentence. It is written in this weird format. The authors really took a risk there. But also, the audio... I'm going to cheat here and you need to read these because I feel like that's the thing. These books were meant to be read with the audio books. So like you need to have the physical and the audio of them to, to, to truly appreciate it because you can see all the government redacted documents in the actual format. And then you hear the full cast and you can hear the beeping in the background and you can hear Aiden's voice as an like as it's a PA system rather than like you thinking it's a real person in your head. The ending is fantastic. They did, aim, again, two authors writing a book, again, made me reevaluate this stigma, or made me reevaluate this view I had of books with multiple authors. I actually think it's more difficult to write them like that. Um, but these two are like, I don't even know how to describe Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. They're amazing writing together. Um, and this is, the cast is amazing. The audiobook is amazing. The execution is amazing. The covers too with these things absolutely amazing this is one of the best not cop-out endings i've ever read in a series like it's just so 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 good and i would highly recommend this series to any single person on this planet whether you like ya or sci-fi or not it's just a, such a legit series you don't even understand if you haven't read it okay so that is the video those are the top 30-ish eh, books that I just could not live without in my life and I hope we never come to a time in the world where I have to try and do this because that would be a nightmare. So I am not going to list these books in the description because I don't have time for that. Just go to my Goodreads. All my social media will be linked in the description down below. Go to my Goodreads. They're all listed as own if you need to and make sure when I go to the description box you check all my social media. If you follow me I will follow you.